Hi everybody, welcome to this video series where we're going to be looking into using our services in SQL Server. In a future video, I might look into how you can use Python in SQL Server as well, but let's start with R in this video series. So what I've done is I have this new tool from Microsoft. It's probably going to be a replacement of SQL Server Management Studio going forward, but it is called Azure Data Studio. So all my examples here, I'm going to be running through this Azure Data Studio, and I'll show you how you can get a hold of this. It's very nice interface. It looks like a Jupyter Notebook style, and you can add code cells. You can add text cells with the markup, uh, markdown uh, language. And it also has different kernels you can take advantage of, like PySpark, Spark Scala, Spark R, Python 3, PowerShell. Uh, I'm going to be working in SQL Server. I set up this SQL kernel. Another thing uh, I'll do in order to connect to SQL Server directly inside here is to go to change connection. If you don't have one, you can create a new connection. And as you can see over here, I created a couple of databases already. One of them is this SQL 2019. And what you'll do is you'll click here and then you choose whatever database you want to be in. If 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 uh, you're pointing to specific database like, like I'm doing here. And my instance is called SQL 2019. So I'm going to connect to that. The first thing I want to show you is how do you get a hold of SQL Server 2019? I'm using the developer edition. And as you can see, this is a text cell. And you can easily edit it. So if I want to make sure I use an uppercase here, uh, I prefix it with two pound signs to get the right size. And then I can just click out of here, and it, it puts it into this text cell. So I want to go to this hyperlink. And when you open this hyperlink, it takes you to this page, which is Microsoft download page. And the download I performed was the one for the developer edition, which is this one here. So you can click here, download, and it will download the SQL Server developer edition onto your computer. Another thing you might want to check out is you can also download SQL Server Management Studio. And it will take you to this page. And it will show you the download link here. And you can install that as well. Uh, there are SQL Server data tools. You have the, the installations for analysis services, reporting services, and integration services here on this page. Finally, if you want to download that nice interface I just showed you, the Azure Data Studio, you click on this link, and it will tell you how you can get that downloaded to your system as well. OK, so the next thing I want to do is I want to take advantage of setting up SQL Server our services. So in order to do that, I have this other link here. And I can click on this, open this. So on this page, as you can see, they have information relating to how you can install SQL Server machine learning services, Python and R, on Windows. And if you look down and scroll down on this page, you can see they have some screenshots. and. When you set up a new SQL Server standalone installation and you go through the installation uh, process, when you enter this feature selection, as you can see over here, make sure that you check the machine learning services and language extensions for R. And if you want Python, you select Python as well. Now, in order to use this, obviously, you need to have the database engine installed. So that's part of this install as well. So you download this uh, this installation. And then you, when you step through the installation itself, make sure you select those in order for your R service to work properly. So now that we've seen how we can download this and gone through the, the installation, the next step will be to activate it and set it up. So in order to do that, after you uh, set up your instance, when you, up, uh, when you open your SQL Server, if you use SSMS, you can just go in and open it that way. 
If not, uh, you can go through this Azure Data Studio. And the first thing you want to do is you want to run this procedure. And when you run this procedure, you can see it, it returns a table of information. And the one that you want to double check on is this external scripts enabled, okay? Initially, when you run this, it's not going to be enabled, okay? Because there's going to, it's going to be zero here in this run value and config value. So I'm going to clear out this, uh, this uh, output here. So I'm going to press Control-Shift-R. And one way I can test to see if that is activated or not is by, by running this little script. But before I do, since mine is active, let me show you what it will look like when it's not active. So I'm going to change this to zero, and I'm going to run this. And then I'm going to go back and check it again. So when you look now, the external script enabled is set back to zero. So that's what it most likely will look like when you start. So let me clear this again. And what you can do now is you can test that little script here. And when I run this, you're going to get an error, as you can see, because that is not enabled at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run it one more time, but I'm going to put a one in again, run this, and now it's configured again. Now when I run this script again, by the way, this is a, just a little test script for our services, and we'll go through this in, in a second here. When I run it now, as you can see, it actually produced some data. So now the R service is up and running. And what this is doing, in order for you to run anything in R services, you have to use, and Python, by the way, you have to use this SP execute external script store procedure. And it expects you to pass in the language you're going to be using. So for R is R. For Python, it will be Python, like so. And here, this variable output data set is specific to uh, be in SQL Server for output. It's, it translates into a R data frame. And this data frame contains, in my case here, just a couple of, uh, uh, couple of text values in this concatenation uh, list here. So when you run it, it just basically produces a small little table with these values in it. So that's how I tested this. So once you have uh, the R services up and running, uh, if you have any issues getting it up and running, uh, what you might want to check out is the services section. And my instance of uh, SQL Server is this SQL Server 2019. And you can scroll down to, to till you see it, your instance, wherever that is, whatever that is called. Um, make sure that when you scroll over here, make sure that is running. So the engine has to be running, but our services and Python services, they don't run directly inside SQL Server. They run in, in a, a safe environment using that SP external procedure we looked at. So in order for that to work, you got to make sure that this SQL Server launch pad is also running. And as you can see, this particular um, service is used to for the advanced analytics extensions. So that has to be running as well. Without that, you're not going to be able to run anything. So make sure you test that these two are up and running. And if not, or if you cannot get the reconfiguration properly working, you should uh, stop and restart these two. So you should be stopping and restarting the uh, SQL server and the launch pad. Typically, this, this automatically gets started when you do that. So but make sure those are up and running, and then try your script again if you have any issues with it. So now that we have that out of the way, the next thing I want to do, it's getting a little large here. Let me try to reduce the size there. OK. Um, so what I want to do now is show you how you can check and see what's installed on your R server. So one 
little uh, query you can run is to see what version you're using. And as you can see, I'm using this Microsoft SQL Server 2019. Let me copy that out and open it up and so you can see what it says. So as you can see here, this is the description for my edition. As you can see, it's the developer edition 64-bit. So that tells me which SQL Server instance I'm running on here. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what exactly, which R packages do I have available to, to, to work with? And there is a little procedure you can run that checks for that. And it's using an R script to figure it out because you can see it's using this execute external script. The language is R. And the script I'm going to be running is this lit string literal here. And what this one does, it, uh, it's going to look using this functionality here. It's going to look for which packages are installed in, in this SQL Server R services. And it's going to return a data frame with a name and a version, which is going to go into this variable we talked about before, which is a data frame uh, that SQL Server uses this name for. Uh, the input uh, data is nothing. We're not going to put anything in. And we're just going to ob obtain the results by using this with result sets. And when you use this with result set, this is how SQL Server gets the data back from R. It's going to have to say which column uh, are you going to be putting the, the data values from this data frame into. So this name is going to go into this package name column. And that is of, of type Unicode varcar. And the package version is going to be an nvarcar max field. So when I run this, it's going to come back with a, with a table of all the packages that's available to me. OK, so now that we have a list of these packages that are installed on SQL Server, um, there is one package that I know I'm going to need. Um, we're going to be mostly working with this performance analytics package, which I have already installed. So I'm going to show you how you can remove and how you can install new packages. Uh, keep in mind, when I installed my uh, packages that I used for this uh, video series, I had to do quite a bit of installs. And uh, the one package that I'm using in in my series here is called TidyQuant, but it consists of many, many packages. And one of those that are, comes with this TidyQuant collection is the performance analytics. And you might run into problems when you do this install because it might keep telling you, oh, you're missing this package, you're missing this package, you're missing this package. So you need to sp spend some time, make sure that you get all the packages that it requires installed. This one requires quite a few packages, and I had to sit and go back and forth several times to do this. So let me just show you for now how you can install a package that I see I don't have in here. And the package that I want to install, um, by the way, if you're going to install a new package, you can go to SQL Server's. Uh, if you go to your C drive program files, Microsoft SQL Server, I want to put them into this folder here. So inside this folder here, there is an R services folder and there's a Python services folder. So for R packages, I'm going to put them inside this R services location. So this is the path to where I'm going to be putting my, my packages. And the folder you want to install your packages to is this library folder. So this will be the path that you want to use when you install these packages. So what I like to do is I like to use RStudio. So I install the latest version of RStudio. And when you do, uh, you need to make sure that um, you open RStudio as an administrator. So in other words, you will have to right click on RStudio and you have to say run as administrator. And that's how I open this, this particular file. Now, if you look at this file here, I have a reference to this library I want to install my packages into. And I create a variable called lib, and I load that with that text string, this path, in other words. This is where I want to install the packages. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to see what packages are already installed. That's similar to what we just did. I want to look at these packages, but there's a lot of them. So, you know, I don't want to go through all that. So instead, there's another command you can run, which is this one here, where you basically set the name of the package you're looking for. And by using this percentage in percentage, you can check out the row names for all of these packages here and find the row where this name is occurring. So by running this one, I hit control enter. You can see that, yes, it's true, it's installed here, right? But one thing that you need to verify is that you need to make sure you're pointing to the right place. So as you can see here, I'm not in the right place. So what I need to do, I need to change this direct directive. And I want to point to the, um, so I want to go browse. I want to go to Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, go to do 2019, and go to Our Services. This is where I want to point to. So I'm going to select that folder, and then I'm going to say OK, and then I have to close this for it to take place. So in other words, I go to Tools, you go to Global Options, and then you set it here. Okay. Now we have uh, set the reference to the SQL Server, Our Services which you can see up here. And I, I I closed our studio and I opened it up again. So as you can see now, now it's pointing to this folder. Um, and you can see it here. It's pointing to this R services folder. All right, so the next thing is to, to check to, and see if that package is, is installed in this, which it, sh it shouldn't be. So let me try that. And you can see it returns a false. So I don't have that package in that location. By the way, if you want to remove a package, you set your library uh, library path like so, and then you say remove packages, the name of the package you want to remove, comma separated with this lib equals lib, meaning whatever the variable is. That will remove the package if it's uh, existing. You're going to install a package. You say install packages name a package, the location you want to install it to, which is this library folder under our service on 2019, and any dependent packages you want to include as well. You can do this dependency equals true. And it tells me that it was actually installed. And you can easily check this by simply going over here to packages and type TBL, and there it is. You can see it's right there. We can also uh, verify it in the uh, Azure Data Studio that this package has been installed. I can run this script again. And when I run it one more time, you can see the table of packages shows up here. So I want to find that one package that starts with a TBL. There it is. So you can see the package is installed and it's ready to go inside. Azure Data Studio, in other words, in SQL Server itself. You install this tidy uh, quant package. It has a lot of dependency on other packages. And uh, one thing you might want to do to save yourself some grief is to go to the CRAN, uh, the repository, and search for tidy quant. So you do a Google search, CRAN space tidy quant, and it hopefully will take you to this page here. And if you look here, this tells you th what that depends on. And you can see there's a whole list of packages. Make sure you have all these packages installed in order for it to work properly. It's a little tedious, but that's the way it is. So make sure you check that out if you have any issues.